Okay, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about um, two potential allies um, on the new right that we maybe don't realize we have. Uh, people who are actually quite conservative, and maybe we've just never noticed. Um, and I will divide it into two parts. Uh, so uh, the first part of this report will be... Um, uh, women are essentially conservative. Uh, and uh, the second part will be um, on immigrants. Most immigrants are deeply right wing. So, OK, here we go. Uh, the report from Tiger Mountain, part one and two. Bang, bang. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes, um, you know, see this this whole thing. You know, uh, one of the things we see in media uh, is the, you know the, the the kind of feminism is somehow an enemy of, of uh, the new right or conservatism. Um, and I often think, have they never actually spoken to a beautiful woman? Many of these people, because um, women are some of the most conservative people on the planet, absolutely. And um, if you want to know, um, you know. Uh, why things have often been so right wing all over the world? Uh, it's because of the you know the partners of all, every right wing dictator that's ever existed back to the year dot probably. You know what I mean? Like you know, like women. Um, uh, you know, and this is why I totally disagree with the notion of the patriarchy as well. Women have been there throughout history, constantly telling their men exactly what to do, and we've generally been doing it. You know what I mean? Like women are, are, are by nature. Uh, um, conservative, they, they like the family and they like um, a certain a certain structure of things and, um, you know, uh, they just have uh, an innate sense of conservatism. And of course, you know, sometimes you'll see women on Facebook, uh, who they might not be the most radical feminists, but they might share the odd. Um, you know, obviously, women have a tendency towards empathy. So you will see, you know, a bit of touchy-feely kind of stuff often coming from, from women. But when you really kind of speak to them, um, you know, they, you know, they can be very tough-minded, and um, you know they really understand. I mean, and why do you think women go for alpha males? You know what I mean? Like, you know, they don't like the the the, the beta male guy who's all into like feminism and stuff. They actually go for idiots like me who are kind of like, you know, um, I don't know, like you know, vaguely. Um, you know, right wing or, or, you know, and or, well, vaguely right wing, I could probably be a bit more than that, but like, you know, just, just, I don't know, like, um, you know, that's always been the case. You look at, you know, like who would do beautiful women, um, go for, it's always kind of alpha male Don Draper types and, and, and you know, very, um, aggressive and kind of, you know, out there men, bad boys, you know, who, who are, you know, um, that kind of you know, archetype, you know, um, the Heathcliffs and, and, and all those, you know, romantic heroes from the novels of Jane Austen and stuff. You know, all these men are really deeply, deeply conservative figures and women are obsessed with them. You know, I mean, Christian Grey from Fifty Shades got completely conservative and completely, um, you know, a kind of dominant male kind of figure. So, you know, it's this idea that women, um, you know, um, they, they just aren't like that. Um, that's just really not their nature. Now, they, now, of course, you know, obviously there are some women who are obviously radical feminists. And if you look at them, they're always women who are ugly. I mean, let's be honest. Um, they are. I mean, you look at well, that last panel, for example, that was on Quanda. These women are, are terribly ugly. And obviously they're attempting to compensate for the fact that they can't compete with beautiful women um, by, I don't know, developing um, a kind of stringent kind of new left politics, which I think they, I don't know, maybe they think it's appealing in some way. And I don't know, maybe to some men within the left, maybe it is, I don't know, I don't want to think about their poor lives, and it's good luck to them if, they, if that's what they're doing. But like, you know, women are by nature deeply conservative, and they have been working with men. Um, our society is not a patriarchy, it's, it's been men and women collaborating, attempting to li make life less miserable, probably since the Stone Age. And um, sometimes we've, you know, we have actually made life mis less miserable, and it's been a joint effort between men and women. And um, let's just keep doing it. And I think women can be our strongest allies. Um, I think many women today, are, you know, get very nervous um, around certain things the new left are up to. You know, things that involve, you know, like pushing agendas to children, and a lot of women are very conservative about that. This whole thing about you know trans men and. Um, um, going into like women's sport. I mean, you know, basically that's, tr that's saying that the trans meme or the trans, um, you know, uh, you know, identity politics trumps like women, which is half the population of the world versus, I don't know what the population of trans people are, but it's got to be under 1% of all humanity, right? So, you know, like it doesn't make any sense that, that women, you know, have to like, uh, and just about every woman I have ever spoken to on this topic, left and right, agrees with me on it. They say, oh, it's just ridiculous the way that these trans men are competing in women's sports. And it is, it is. 
it's ridiculous. So, you know, I mean, I think women can be a very great ally. Um, and um, I, I think we need to see more women um, who speak out. Um, and also, too, even if they don't want to speak out, you know, not everyone always says exactly, you know, what they're thinking. You know, people, you know, like have a public face. You just think about this in the Jungian sense. People have a, have a mask that they present to the world. Um, this is how most people are. Not people, not everyone's a loudmouth idiot like myself. Um, most people have a mask, that they, but behind the scenes is what they really think. And one of the interesting things about being outspoken is, um, you know, when I go to many uh, industry functions within the film industry or within, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a social butterfly at times, people tell me the truth. And um, they're very, you know, these people are just, you know, they've had it with all this stuff. Even many people within the left have had it with the way the left has been behaving. So I believe women can be on the side uh, of the new right. And um, I welcome them as long as they're, you know, especially the attractive ones. Part two of Allies Maybe We Didn't Know We Had. And this one will be controversial because, ladies and gentlemen, one of the great allies for the new right could potentially be immigrants. Okay? Think about this, okay? Okay. Where does liberalism come from uh, um, and um, new left politics? This does not come from foreign countries. This only comes from basically um, a feat Western liberals and upper middle class you know, latte sipping champagne socialists and stuff. I don't know if anyone's ever spoken to people from the Muslim community. I mean, they make people on the new right or the alt right or any other form of right that we have in the West, they make them look like um, uh, social justice warriors. You know what I mean? Like even the ones who, you know, they are quite radically right wing. And I remember when um, the, uh, I think the Greens, they were targeting kind of Muslim areas and, and stuff around certain uh, areas that were fairly Muslim. I remember seeing this, Green posters, of it. and I, re I really thought, do the Greens think Muslims are going to vote for them? I mean, you know, uh, to to um to Muslims like Pauline Hanson would be um like you know like like a left winger. You understand that? You know what I mean? Like that's she's nothing. And I remember I had a really interesting conversation with a chap from Pakistan in a Seven Eleven one night. You know, out. And I was chatting to him, and, and I just saw you know I got talking to him. Unlike left wing people, I actually do talk to foreigners, and. Um, and don't treat them as like, I don't know, they just treat them as like uh, like pets or something, the left. But anyway, I was actually talking to this Pakistani gentleman and I was speaking about politics. And I said, what do you think of Pauline Hanson? And he said something very interesting. He said, um, you know, she's fine. You know, he goes, she's just standing up for your people. <laughs> and I go, yeah, she is, isn't she? You know, and, and he goes, yeah, absolutely. He says, well, you, think, you think we're stupid here? And we know what she's doing and she, she, we are completely fine. As a matter of fact, we respect her for it. And, and he says, you know, um, he was speaking about other, he was completely opposed to the same sex marriage thing. I mean, why, you know, way more radically than any white person I ever spoke to. He had a whole bunch of concerns. And he also said something very interesting. He said, in my country where I originally came from, the Taliban was a legitimate party that you, you was on the ballot you could vote for. He said, there's no one on the ballot within Western, any Western country or within Australia that we are worried about because we're used to dealing with people like the Taliban. Okay. So like, there's nothing here politically that, that we feel threatened by. So, you know, I thought that was a very articulate comment. And he was, um, you know, studying uni at university and, you know, like most people, one of these um, Pakistani or Indian gentlemen who work at 7-Eleven, he was just studying hard and, you know, un unlike many uh, Westerners, he was just working to make his life better. So, um, you know, that was very interesting. And um, I think, you know, you will find also within, say, the Asian world, um, you know, for example, the country of Singapore, and um, it's found a... Lee Kuan Yew, Jung, I think, Lee Kuan Yew, that's how you pronounce his name, I believe. Um, he founded Singapore along a set of beliefs called Asian values, which are all deeply conservative. Um, now, I know there are um, Asian countries like uh, China, obviously, that the, are the, the radical communists and stuff, but somehow, they're, you know, Chinese, I think, are by nature conservative. They, they believe in the family, they believe in working hard, and, you know, I mean, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this can also be said about people from Africa at times. Um, you know, I don't know, I mean, um, for example, you know, um, you know, we've got this kind of, you know, we have Sudanese crime waves and stuff. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the way they handle things like that over in Africa. Like the elders, like get like a tree branch off the tree and, and whoop the living shit out of the people who did it. Like in the town, they drag you and said, and, and when I went to Africa to make my documentary about Uganda, they said there's like a people's justice when there's someone is a, a thief or someone is a this, that and the other, the elders get together and just, just dish it out you know what i mean so you know th these people are are, are, um, are also deeply conservative and i imagine if we were to you know like leave um the actual sudanese community to solve the the juvenile delinquency problem within the Su sudanese community and we were to give them free reign to do so the problem would end next week you know what i mean like um 
you know, it's like, you know, we, the whole problem is, and is that the West has become, you know, soft and that our enemies um, in, in China or people wish to see the uh, Western civilization collapse, um, they are exploiting our weakness. And, you know, we need to be tough again because what we're saving is essentially, you know, a much, much larger version of what's behind me um, today, which is the Library of Alexandria. We, 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 we stand to lose the, the greatest gift this planet has ever seen, which is um, Western civilization. So you know, this is a great um, epochal battle that we're in. And uh, I think women and some immigrants who are, are conservative and can um, you know, see where we're coming from can be our allies. And um, again, we should welcome them because this is a, a broad movement. This is a populist movement. And this is about taking over everything and changing the entire course of Western history. And that's what we're about. So... That's it, ladies and gentlemen.